Welcome back to the news, everyone. All right, decently chunky update to the Activision Blizzard story, but it's not one that really marks the end of anything whatsoever, though it could actually be quite nice for some of the people who have been wronged. Here's the deal. Activision Blizzard reached an agreement with the EEOC, commit to new workplace initiatives, and create an $18 million compensation fund. Which, just off the face of it, is funny to me because, not literally funny, but remember when Riot had their thing, which uh, turned into a $10 million fund, and then whatever State Department, I think, slammed in and was like, 10 mil, that's not enough. This could be, like, 400 mil. (laughs) So, um, interesting. I I wonder if if any um, further things will happen to this, but this is very much not the end, and we'll get into it. All right, Activision Blizzard have settled at least one small part of their current woes, where earlier this week, they settled a lawsuit with the U.S. Equal Opportunity, or Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, over alleged pervasive sexual harassment and discrimination. Now, this was a suit filed Monday with the Central District of California Court, and it was the culmination of a three-year investigation into Activision Blizzard. It's kind of funny, you know, all of those um, investor lawsuits that are kind of saying, hey, hey, us investors, might be nice if we knew some of these things. So, yeah, three years. Now, the EOC notified Activision Blizzard of their findings on June 15th after launching this investigation in September 2018. Timings of which, of course, mean the jail and Brack would have been there as the leader of Blizzard while the whole thing was going on. I guess you wonder, you know, how much sort of filtered up from uh, from Jab to the, you know, the sort of big Activision Blizz. You know, I, I have to wonder. But yeah, um, then they launched what they referred to as extensive conciliation discussions with Activision Blizzard. And in light of the recent allegations, of course, of the California Department of Fair Housing and Employment, um, should be noted that Activision Blizzard readily cooperated with the investigation. I'd imagine because they had no bloody choice. So, as for what's came of this, there's a settlement. Right, reports were emerging last week that ActiBlizz was basically in talks for a settlement with the EEOC, and uh, they confirmed in a statement that they were. Activision Blizzard have published a summary of the agreement on their investor relations website. It goes into actually quite a lot of detail on the terms and the stipulations of the settlement, and mostly is good things. And the summary also does note that unless otherwise noted in the agreement, the terms will be in effect for three years from its start date. So, what are these terms that Blizzard have agreed to here? Well, first up, they've established an employee restitution and compensation fund totaling $18 million. So, essentially, employees who have been wronged will now be able to claim, and through some sort of process that I don't understand, they will receive financial compensation for um, you know, for what's happened to them. And I have to imagine in a few of those cases, that could be decently large. I mean, what happens for somebody who, you know, was genuinely, you know, pa- like, passed up for promotion, let's just say, not in a fair manner, based, uh, you know, based on their on their performance? You know, perhaps they... I mean, think of the lost income there. Maybe if that holds back their career in general, I mean, there, there could be decently chunky arguments to be made. Um, now, that said, if any of this money doesn't end up going to people, then it will be divided uh, between contributions for nonprofits to support women in games and tech, and further investments in diversity and inclusion efforts at Activision Blizzard. They're also upgrading company policies, practices, and training, which we've basically heard of before. And this also includes a new performance review system that's designed to focus on equal opportunities. So I've got to wonder how that is designed, like what actually makes that different. I don't know. I'm not in the corporate world. Moving on. Um, They're engaging a neutral third-party equal opportunity consultant to ensure their ongoing compliance. Now, what's interesting here is you might just think, oh, like Wilmer Hale, who like to bust unions for the rich. (laughs) Well, uh, this individual must be a non-employee who has been approved by the EEOC. So then, will the EEOC end up, uh, you know, being okay if it's a sort of Wilmer Hale type that is kind of seen as being a little bit of, um, well, I guess, the swamp of big business? Uh, Would the EEOC not be okay with that? Or maybe it turns out it's one of those situations where somebody who was in the EEOC then ends up going into law and, you know, it's all just cozy, cozy bullshit because we are talking about government things after all and, uh, you know, we have to be skeptical of them. 
Now, they're also going to report their findings directly to the EEOC and Activision Blizzard and hire an internal EEO coordinator with relevant experience in gender discrimination, harassment, and retaliation to assist the third-party consultant with ensuring compliance. So basically, right, 18 mil to compensate people, update the internal policies, and then people coming on board who report directly to the EEOC to actually, well, hold their feet to the fire, ensure that they actually do, uh, you know, keep up with this. Of course, we got some, another, you know, statement from Bobby, right, who says that there's no place anywhere at the company for all of these terrible things, that he's sorry that uh, anyone had to experience this, and that he remains unwavering in his commitment to make it one of the world's most uh, inclusive, respected, and respectful uh, workplaces, which is rather funny because, you know, EA Games haven't been going around making statements like this, and they seem to have actually done pretty okay as far as things have went. They've not been implicated in massive scandals about these things. Andrew Wilson has talked about them having to get rid of people and how they take this stuff seriously. And, I mean, I'm sure bad things have happened at EA Studios, but, you know, there's there's been no big story. There's been no super big pervasive problem, it would have seemed, at EA. So it's the sort of thing where it's like, you know, you see Bobby say that, and it's like, really, Bobby, were you just not aware of what was going on? Because if you did have this unwavering commitment, maybe a bit more like how some of EA have been, then maybe none of this would have happened in the first place, and the evidence of your unwavering commitment to all of these things would have been that these bad things didn't happen. Therefore, this case didn't happen, and we wouldn't be talking about it right now. I wonder. Now, he does go on to thank the EEOC for its constructive engagement as they work to fulfill their commitments. Now, the agreement is something that's actually been published in full, and uh, Blizzard have, or Activision Blizzard, have enthusiastically linked people to the full agreement. Uh, It's the sort of thing where, you know, sometimes these settlements things, they can remain a little bit hush-hush and all of that, but I think ActiBliz, you know, they've agreed to the settlement. So the EEOC are probably happy enough with what's being done, or at least think that they have the structures in place to really slam ActiBliz if they sort of slip at any of these things. And I guess that because of that, there there is quite a commitment that ActiBliz now has to hold themselves to. And being very public about that is probably one of the better ways to um, you know address the reputational damage. Now, I'd say a really good way would be to think about some of the better ABK uh, employee advocacy uh, groups' suggestions, some of their demands, and maybe think about those forced arbitration agreements. I think if that was something that changed, then, yeah, maybe, actually, uh, you would see uh, you would see more people begin to come around. But it's kind of hard to see those going, isn't it? Yeah, one of the things I think to keep in mind for doing this is, or for like going through this story, is that the EEOC is federal. Mm-hmm. The the DFEH from California are likely to go significantly harder, mm-hmm. like they did with Riot back in the day when, because you, you said that earlier, that was a $10 million settlement for a class action. Yeah. And then the DFEH went, no, our objection will block this in court because this should be closer to $400 million overall. Obviously, this hasn't happened because they have successfully settled, but the DFE, the DFEH are currently in with them anyway. So this is likely like the very, you know, this is basically the first shot of a barrage is likely to come down on Activision Blizzard. But I think uh, it's a kind of thing where this is just going to be mild. Yeah. So I actually looked up while you were saying there what the, like how much money employees are likely to get. And the average retaliation uh, sort of compensation is about forty thousand dollars, right? Which isn't really all that much if you think about it. But then I imagine that's average across, like, all of employment. Uh, yeah. But salaries in this place will likely be generally higher. I guess that's so that's, that's the to thing to remember. Like forty thousand dollars is a hell of a lot of money in, I mean, the vast vast majority of the world. Yeah. I mean, you know, here in in Belfast, Northern Ireland, you know, it would be a hell of a lot of money here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does not seem like it is as much of a hell of a amount of money in uh, in California, at least with, you know, perhaps the cost of living. If you are somebody who is located in, you know, in and around the Blizzard campus, so that um, you can, you know, sort of effectively work yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, even if you think about it from the from the perspective of how Blizzard pay compared to Riot, forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars wouldn't turn your Blizzard salary into a Riot salary at the end of the day. No. So it's so it doesn't seem like that much. So 80, I imagine dollars might. Yeah, so I imagine it'll be a little bit higher. But another bit of flavor, just to kind of see what actual complaints this stuff is likely to be about. The EEOC most successfully get claims through on the basis of retaliation. At about 55.8% of all charges are based on retaliation. Right. Then about 31.7% are based on sex. So it's that kind of thing where a lot of the, the successful charges here and the successful compensation will likely be very obviously proven bits of retaliation. 
So that's likely what that's going to be overall. Which means this is like, this is one small part of the overall puzzle of employee, employee mistreatment. And that's just a little bit of flavor on like the, the 80 million. Doesn't seem like an awful lot in the grand scheme of things. Because it is only a small part of what's actually gone wrong overall. Yeah, and I think what you said about it being a barrage is a big thing because we got to you got to look at everything through the lens of optics and spin, right? Mm -hmm. So, Activision Blizzard being very, very much like, "Hey, look at this! This is great! Look what we've done!" Yeah, they obviously stand to gain, and eighteen million is really not a lot of money for them. Mm -hmm. um, so, that does make you think that this is them just trying to get all the good news that they can, and then, as you said, yeah, when. EFH comes in, it could be a little bit more rough. When the SEC uh, SEC comes in, I mean, that's where it could start to get extremely interesting. And one of the things we, we were talking about the SEC case, and I should probably just add it here for everyone in yeah. the news channel audience, because um, you know we were chatting about this on the stream that we do over on our Warcraft channel. And uh, one of the things to remember is the SEC. I mean, look, DFH, they're gonna they can they can fine you, they can do a lot. Um, the SEC can come in with handcuffs. Mm -hmm. that you know the sec are the group who can well just do do that i mean um take uh okay it's a bit slightly different example but like elizabeth holmes she's in a lot of trouble right now for theranos along with uh sunny her um her, i think other half i don't know if they split or anything i forget um you know that whole big scandal that's the sec who are who are dealing with that um at least i'm pretty sure in part uh, so, you know, when it comes to, like, just, you know, funny business from, you know, from the CEO types, this is this is where they can actually be on the hook personally. So the SEC is something, you know, it's it's really quite big. California State Department, I mean, just that they were like 10 million, now throw it out 400 million. And okay, we don't actually, I suppose we don't actually know what ended up coming from that. No. But uh, it's probably something more than 10 million. Yeah, of course. Right? So... All of these things are going to be rough. There's definitely rough days ahead for Activision Blizzard. It's hard to prove these things have got, you know, it's just hard to prove when they'll get better. I mean, here's a good example. You know, I, I've, I actually don't know anyone at Riot, but I do know people who have had colleagues that have went to Riot. And, you know, from them, I have heard that Riot has generally been, um, like... I guess not what you would have thought based on the past and based on that big drama. So perhaps they have had some degree of change. Now, I'm not very embedded with any Riot community, so I don't really know how that actually came across to the players. And maybe if they were able to get a little bit more faith in Riot um, or how that happened. But I suppose those are some of the questions we've we've got asked, some of the things we've got to think about. You know, how does this actually trickle down to uh, to the staff, to the players? Another thing then is staffing we may as well have a quick chat about here because I don't really know what other video we could fit it into. It's probably not its own topic, but as you guys know, Warcraft channel is a big thing that we do. And one of the things we've noticed as a part of running that channel is a lot of hiring. The, I think, is it the quest team on World of Warcraft has got so many roles open. Yeah. Um, and, and decently, regularly, we are seeing Blizzard employees tweeting, you know, here is... Here's an image. Here's a whole bunch of roles. We're, a hire, we're hiring associate through senior. And that just makes you think they're staffing up. Now, the World of Warcraft team, let's just say, based on the size of that game, it is way smaller than you would think, uh, from, from what I understand, right? So they're clearly trying to staff up because I think they've realized that for two expansions in a row, they've, was it a day late and a dollar short? You know, <laughs> they, they just, they, it's like they have not been able to make enough content. And you're just kind of thinking, like, why is this a, as Asmongold would say, a multi-dollar company? It just doesn't make any sense. Um... So in this current environment, this is actually, this is something that probably should rattle the faith of investors because, you know, if you're hiring an engineer role, and I, I don't want to like totally play into the myth of the 10X engineer, mm. but from both being in, like we both have engineering backgrounds, like, I, I mean, I'm, I assume you agree, but like a 10X engineer is a fucking thing. Oh yeah, of course, definitely is. Yeah, like, that's just how it is. I'm not a 10x engineer. No, me neither, but yeah. 
uh, but you see a 10x engineer now a 10x engineer it's kind of like you know oh it's just one of those engineers who they're they're so good they'll do the work of 10 and you know sometimes there's a bit of mythos there but look i i've i've worked with a few people seen a few people that shit's pretty damn true those yeah. people are worth their goddamn weight in gold now if you are the next big 10x engineer and there's a job open at riot and there's a job open at blizzard i mean i hear blizzard is trying to fix their low compensation problem but even at that which one are you going to go to, considering the drama going on at Blizzard? So the amount of damage that this is going to do to their ability to hire top-tier talent, it's going to be kind of rough. Yeah, I mean, even even to use one specific example of what they're hiring for, and they've been doing, I mean, obviously, I don't know how quick these roles get filled in this kind of place, but the, they've been hiring an associate game director for a while. Mm. You would imagine that with an IP like World of Warcraft, you would have people jumping, you know, going so far out of the way to apply for associate game director on that but i guess i mean obviously that's maybe a little bit much you're, you're certainly running into a problem where wow has alienated a lot of the people who really yeah. liked core old wow and i mean frankly with the current overall like kind of destiny 2 of the game but like it's more nice than destiny 2 because you know, the 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 fundamentals of destiny 2 are more fun because it's like, you know, the, the shooting is, you know, you're, you're just so, like, connected to your character, right? The, you know, the, the effects and all of that. Um, I, I just don't see that being the most attractive thing in the universe, right? Now, mm -hmm. that said, I also imagine that Associate Game Director for I was a big thing, and it probably would take a while to hire somebody for that. Yeah. So they could be waiting. They could be weighing up, you know, an external versus an internal hire. Or somebody could actually be, you know, there, but they're on their probation period. Because that is ah, the thing with these companies. You could have a 60-day probation period. Um, I mean, a good example, if you want to think about on YouTube, you know, uh, a new member of staff in Linus Tech Tips. They are completely invisible to the audience until their probation period's over. And I, I forget how long that is. Maybe it's 60 days, 90 days, whatever. But, uh, there, you know, there could be something like that. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's just something to think about, you know. It's... Uh, you got to think about the individual people who make up these big complex systems and is an individual person really going to feel like blizzard entertainment is the group to work at and i think you know, as players we would all like blizzard to be fixed up for it all to be good and for the best talent in the world to i mean i know maybe we want the best talent in the world just kind of <laughs> making our own companies making cool new things of course could probably say that but in a way you know if you, if you like world of warcraft what do you want? You want the best motherfuckers on the planet in there making that game to make it as good as it can be so you and your friends can have fun. And as players, I think that's what we want. And it is harder to see that happen, or at least they will have a harder time doing that um, in, in this current environment. Yeah, and I think uh, to bring it back around to the, like, the legal sit situation at hand, there is one thing that I wanted to just say about all of this. And I think you bringing up a better ABK earlier is a very good way to bounce off it because they're dealing with legal problems. They're not dealing with actual problems, if you kind of get me. Yeah. Where they're doing this from a legal perspective. Obviously, they're they're relatively aligned in that the, the legal stuff is trying to solve the real problem. But ultimately, it is, you know, they're dealing with the EEOC and doing what EEOC want. They're doing what the, the you know, the Department of Fair Employment and Housing want. They'll be doing what the SEC want. But they still don't appear to be in contact with a better ABK who are, you know, the employee group who are trying to make things better for themselves. Mm. So I think that's uh, that's one important thing to keep in mind as we see the legal proceedings go through, is how yeah. much is this how much is this actually helping? Because I know it would be great for us to see, oh yeah, Bobby's been fined hundreds of millions. Get him, go get him legal system for all of this awful stuff to let happen. But at the end of the day, it's the employee yes. well-being that matters. And I think that's... Uh, that's where to keep your eye on, I think, and overall. I think the final thing to set a little bit of tone and flavor mm -hmm. is that I think Bobby's overall compensation this year is like $150 million. Now, I should say, to be fair to the CEO himself, a tiny percentage of that is salary. Most mm -hmm. of that is in stock options. Maybe he has restrictions on how he can, you know, uh, use those stock options or whatever. But, you know, we see this, and then you're like, well, what, what, what's, what's the Bobster getting? And you're mm -hmm. like, oh... Net worth go woo. So yes, keep all those things in mind. I think a better ABK are a pretty active group, though. Uh, they are working with, you know, like I, th I think like you know union and stuff like that. So we shall see. I think if things don't make progress, a better ABK will let us know, and we'll be able to talk about that then. Hmm. But there you go. That is this step.
do expect more to come. Uh, thank you for, um, for listening in. I hope you find this uh, to be useful, and we'll see you next time.